Ho, 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 superstars. Despite my appearance, I am not Santa Claus, but I am your best friend, Scott. Welcome. The uh, holidays are coming, obviously, so I wanted to make a little gift guide for those looking to buy something special for the sports card nerd. Where are they? I think they're talking about us. No way. I mean, enthusiast in their lives. So this may not be directly for my usual audience, but hopefully this helps some people navigate this little universe of ours. Uh, I know a lot of us, myself included, are very hard to buy for because we buy ourselves so much stuff and our collections can be very broad or very focused. So uh, before you begin, it really helps to know generally what your collector collects. Are they into a certain player, a certain team or a certain era? Do they collect autographs or are they into one sport or and, uh, many sports? So here's a hypothetical situation. Let's say my wife wanted to get me something really special and she bought me a 1952 Topps Mickey Mantle. Now that's a very expensive card and most collectors want that card, but I do not. I don't collect Yankees. I don't collect Mickey Mantle. So I would feel rotten that she went out and she spent that much money and bought me something that really doesn't connect with me. Instead, I do collect Cleveland cards pretty much exclusively. So if she bought me a 1952 Topps, Bob Feller, even though I already have one, um, I'd appreciate that so much more, even though this feller is worth a fraction of what the Mickey Mantle is worth. Um, that's kind of an over-exaggerated il illustration there, but the point is that you don't necessarily have to spend hundreds or thousands to make your collector happy, but it does help to be on target. Hi, welcome to Targa. And I get that it's probably a lot easier to buy for a spouse than say your cousin's husband that you've only met twice and you got him in the uh, annual family gift exchange, but we'll try to keep things as simple as possible and cover as much ground as we can. So enough yapping, let's discuss those gift ideas. As I was researching and putting this together, I noticed that a lot of my hobby friends were opening Topps Holiday. Every year, the Topps Baseball Card Company releases Topps Holiday, and you can sometimes find it on Topps.com or Walmart, and it can be a little tough to find, but basically, it's Topps regular baseball card design with a Christmas twist. It's got crazy snowflakes and candy canes and holly and whatnot, and I've received these before, and they're a blast to open. Great if your collector is younger or into modern cards and players, but in all honesty, they are generally kind of worthless if that's something that's important to you. They're fun right now, but you know, next June, there isn't gonna be quite the appeal. It's a novel experience, but these are not necessarily going to be a cornerstone of your collector's collection. I'm not necessarily saying don't buy these, nor am I endorsing them, but they are a lot of fun at the moment, but may not be for everyone. So what about your cousin's husband that I mentioned earlier? What do you get him? Obviously you could get him an eBay gift card or even a gift card to the local hobby shop if they have one. Yeah! But who wants to give a super convenient and easy to buy gift card? Not this guy. So not sexy, but always appreciated. You can never go wrong with supplies. Collectors have to have them, but hate spending money on them. So it's kind of like socks. So let's talk about penny sleeves and top loaders. Uh, us collectors are neurotic, so we have to put our cards in these soft penny sleeves before we put them in a hard top loader so that we protect our cards from the protection. Ultra Pro is pretty nice. Other brands that are good are BCW and Cardboard Gold. And some collectors really like these shells penny sleeves. These have a notch cut out of the corner to help you get the card in there without damaging it. Neurotic, I tell you. If you know a little bit more about your collector and you want to take things a step further, you can get into more specific supplies. Like if your collector uses a lot of binders, binder pages are always in demand. For that, I would stick with Ultra Pro Premium 9 pocket pages. I might steer clear of buying actual binders because we can be pretty finicky about those. Like I only use white D-ring binders, neurotic. If your collector collects vintage cards made before 1957, the sizes of these baseball cards were all over the place. So supplies for those different sizes are nice to have. There are penny sleeves for little tobacco cards and different sleeves for cards from 1948 to 51. And then from 1952 to 1956, baseball cards were slightly larger than they are now. So there are sleeves and top loaders for those too. You can even get binder pages for these different sizes, but if you're not sure, don't sweat it. Just buy the regular sizes that I mentioned earlier. If you know your collector likes to send players autograph requests through the mail or TTM, regular postage stamps are like gold. Um, does your collector collect autograph baseballs? Rawlings official Major League Baseballs might be appreciated. You pretty much want to use that specific ball. And personally, I find it helpful to have a few blank ones on hand, you know, just in case I run into a player signing at a show or something like that. 
I do have Amazon affiliate links for most of these things in the description below, you know, so I can buy myself lunch or something, but don't feel obligated to use those. I would also check on eBay. Sometimes the prices are a lot better there. Speaking of eBay, let's talk about buying cards there. For most collectors, this is old hat, but I've been told that eBay can be pretty intimidating. So let's address how to buy on eBay. There are two types of sales on eBay, auctions and buy it now. A lot of time you're gonna pay more for a buy it now sale, but even so, they're a lot easier and you're guaranteed to get what you're after. So let's search for a 1952 Bob Feller card. So you see these have bids, so those are auctions. And if you look at the sidebar, you have a ton of options. So I'm gonna scroll down and select buy it now. Okay. These are buy it now listings. These are Bowman. These are tops here and here's some graded. Um, someone took a bite out of the corner of this one. There's a lot to choose from here. So let's narrow it down to just tops and let's pick these PSA2 graded copies to compare. A graded card is encased in a plastic slab and it protects the card. It helps ensure the authenticity and it gives a numeric grade on the condition of the card. The two big names in grading are PSA and SGC. There are plenty of others too, but let's just stick to these. Um, also keep in mind that your collector may not like graded cards, but for a low grade like this, it's not gonna be a big price difference and they can always take the card out of the slab. Okay, for this one, the centering's not too bad. The color's pretty good and the corners are a little rounded and the edge is a little rough. It's not a great picture, but I don't see any creases. These are all things collectors will look at. A PSA 2 grade is typically not gonna be in great shape as it's on a scale of 10, but this isn't bad for a two. If you look over here, you can make an offer on this card and note the shipping cost is $10. If you were to make an offer, typically you can expect maybe 10%, sometimes 15% off. Let's look at the other one. The centering is not as good as the other, but the corners look a little better. Again, you have some edge wear. The registration looks a little off, but the color looks pretty bold. And again, I don't see any creases. So this one's 150 with free shipping. I like them both pretty equally. Maybe the first one a tiny bit more. So what I would do here is I would make an offer of 140. So when you add the shipping, they'd be the same price. If the offer wasn't accepted, I'd go ahead and choose this one for 150. But is that a good price? Uh, here's where I would use this site, 130point.com, to check recent sales of this card. So right here, type in 1952 Tops Bob Feller PSA 2. This first one sold for 119, but it shows a lot of water damage. Second is an auction for 111. Here's a buy it now for 168, and another buy it now for 114. And you can look at that card, and it looks like it has a pretty gnarly crease going down the middle. So 150 isn't the best price ever, but it seems about right for the look of the card. And I was supposed to keep this simple, wasn't I? I am so sorry. Don't freak out if you find all this overwhelming. That's typically how I would buy a card for myself. What I usually do with my wife is I do all of that legwork for her. And then I give her a list of usually five to 10 specific buy it now listings of cards that I'm interested in. Uh, at different price points. She loves not having to learn the ins and outs of baseball card conditions and pricing, and I end up getting something that I'm genuinely interested in. Win-win. So if you're buying for someone, just ask them for a list like this. And if you know you have someone buying for you who might be struggling, feel free to give them a hand. Uh, one more thing, if you do buy something from eBay, it is good practice to leave positive feedback after you receive the item. And that helps these sellers who are more often than not just individuals trying to make a little extra money. Okay, let's say you wanna give something really special, something a little more unique, and you wanna surprise your collector. How about some sports art? Now, it's more than likely too late to request a commission from an artist at this point. Um, it certainly doesn't hurt to ask or set something up for later down the road. Um, I am a sports artist and I'm booked probably for the next year, but I did just open up an Etsy store. A crummy commercial? Mm -hmm. At the time of this recording, I do have some original art and some t-shirts available, and I'm trying to get more products in there as quickly as I can. And there are plenty of other artists out there who I'm sure have something that can sell you. Instagram is a great place to find them. Some of my friends you should definitely check out are Josie Tellier, Miss Jojo76 on Instagram and Miss Tellier on Etsy. She's got some great art and limited edition cards and stickers and her pennants are really cool too. Super talented. Uh, she is in Canada, so give her a little extra time to ship.
And then there's Eric Kittleberger, Triple Play Design on Instagram. I'll link to his store below too. He's really prolific. He's got a lot of great designs. He's got limited edition cards, prints, posters, apparel, and all of it is gorgeous. And another guy you should check out is Mark Hartsfield. Um, I found him on Facebook and he's been working on his website, bopswallshop.com. Mark recreates classic cards into custom maple wood wall art. I bought this satchel page because I know I'll never be able to afford this card, but having this one on the wall is awesome. If your collector has a favorite vintage cards in their collection, they might like to celebrate or like me wants to represent something that's way out of reach. Mark's wood plaques are fantastic. So that's all I got for you, but if you have any other questions or even other suggestions that I may have overlooked, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. I truly hope this helps. Um, I have put as many links in the description as I could think of. So if you're looking to buy something for a neurotic collector in your life, good luck and Godspeed and don't sweat it. Most of the collectors I know, they would be thrilled that you've even attempted and the sentiment behind that is what makes collecting so special for so many of us. Happy holidays, everybody.